snap. Josh firing deep down near the end zone, looking for Diggs. He's got it. Touchdown! Touchdown, Buffalo! There's Stephon Diggs, a 35-yard hookup with Josh Allen. Touchdown, Bills! Stephon Diggs breakthrough touchdown catch. He'd been pretty quiet in the game beforehand. Brought to you by Belknap Heating and Cooling. Go green, save energy and money with electric heat pump solutions from Belknap. That is our electric play of the game. Sean McDermott's postgame comments still to come. They're brought to you by Northtown Automotive. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it at Northtown. You know, overall, what did you expect here today? You expected... Indianapolis, I mean, that's a respectable team. The coach is well-respected. The quarterback has had a great career. Great, right? We'd say great. I mean, he's had a long career. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Okay. He's and had a great career. He's, he, 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 was really, he was really good today. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, I just, I just don't. What, one thing that makes this Bills team so exciting for me, like the idea of it of winning big, is like, I just Indianapolis is. It's painful to watch them so slow, especially when they needed to get moving. I mean, that, late in it would just, you know, it would make you crazy, right? Like, think of the end of the first half. Mm-hmm. The, the Bills get the stop on fourth down, and they're still able to go whatever that was, ninety six yards. Uh, and, and score right there before halftime, like a minute and a half big, or so. Yeah, yeah, big chunks in the passing game is why this team is so exciting and so dangerous and good. And Indianapolis just missing that. I mean, they did get their plays, but um, I mean, ultimately, just a very small difference between these two teams. Really, it comes down to the field goals, right? I mean, Indianapolis missed a makeable field goal; they could not get into field goal range there for a for a last crack. So, yep. the Bills are through and, to round and two. And they did a good job. The Colts, the Colts did a, a very good job of, like, really, you know, what did you expect in this game? Um, you know, that's, what, that's where we started there uh, a minute ago. And, you know, coming out in the second half, um, you know, I, I got what I expected. I mean, it's just that the Bills had to settle for field goals. I mean, their first they only had three possessions, really, like two and a half possessions uh, in in the third quarter. It was like a, a field goal touchdown and then a drive that ended in the fourth quarter with another field goal. Like, if, if you turn one or both of those field goals into touchdowns, then you've got the game that I was expecting. And he's going to try to drag it out and keep it close, but can they keep up? And but they did a good job of stiffening there and forcing the Bills into those field goals, and thus you ended up with a with a really tight game. So I, I give Indy a lot of credit. I mean they they worked that plan, but they weren't. You got to be perfect if you're going to work that plan. You can't have a field goal go off the the upright. You can't leave a touchdown or, or another field goal on the board on fourth and goal. Like you got to convert those things if you're going to play a game where you're taking the entire play clock up until really until about eight minutes left that was their game was they're taking 25 seconds or 40 seconds like every single snap it's right at zero when they're snapping the ball and you gotta have everything buttoned up and you can't afford to leave points on the field and and they did they left just enough of them on the field for the bills to get out of there with a win 27 24 is the final the bills won't know who they play next until tomorrow night depends on how the Steelers do. If it's the St- if the Steelers win, it's the Steelers. And if they lose to Cleveland, then it would be the winner of the early game tomorrow, Baltimore or Tennessee. 803-0550 is our number. We have Sean McDermott still to come, and whenever he is ready to go, we'll have to move quickly to him. But in the meantime, we'll look for uh, a call or two as well. We'll get some locker room reaction today as well uh, throughout the post-game show. Let's talk to Steve here. Uh, on the air, Steve. Welcome. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Quality show. Uh, I'm on <laughs> the uh, show up in Van, uh, and uh, Bulldog Grand Wagon here. And, uh, you know, and Mike, also an uh, excellent parlay with the Diggs deal. I went with the over uh, at 51 and the win, but, you know, the push, excuse me. But anyway, I just want to tell you guys, I am so amazed at the luck, you know, just what happens with these games. I thought earlier in the season, I thought, you know, like, oh, you know, before we knew what we had here. And I thought, 
oh, this is great that we got some luck, at least with the team. And then to see like a, a field goal, which is totally out of your capacity to influence in any possible way other than blocking it, to hit two poles and then go down, that is just awesome. That, that, that uh, field goal should go up into the stands and out on the Abbott Road. So anyway, guys, I really uh, appreciate your show and uh, nice work. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, they, that was a big miss. <laughs> Indianapolis will have a lot to point to after that loss. So there is a lot to point to, uh, including that that kick. Let's go to Jim next. Hi, Jim. Go ahead. Hey, how you guys doing today? Good, Jim. Thanks for calling us. Hey, uh, I'm just curious. It seems like, you know, watching the game and watching what's going on with offense and defense, first thing I want to say about the offense is, it seems like we changed our game plan. Since when did we go back to the beginning of the season and start having Josh Allen run quarterback keeps and uh, power quarterback runs when obviously the last half of the season seems like we started throwing the ball more? We have probably the best receiving core in football, and it seemed like we just decided to play safe and scared. And on the defense side of the ball, Phillips Rivers had all day long. I know he's had a long career. I don't think he's that good of a quarterback. I know he's broken records. He throws, when he was younger, he was great. He did a great job. He's a competitor. But we gave him all day long. The guy can't move. Blitz up the middle. Make him move. Whenever we got within three or four yards of him, he would dump it. And I was, I was sitting here watching it with um, some people and we're like, why aren't we blitzing this guy? Make He was burning us anyway. If they're going to carve you up, they're going to carve you up with time. Or they'll carve you up. I'd rather take the chance to go by the blitz and get him off his game. The offense kind of disappointed me today. Josh Allen is still amazing. I just don't think that Dable called a great game. I think he went into a shell because he was afraid. That's all I got to say, and um, I'll listen. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, well, I, I think on Rivers, he just gets the ball out of there so fast. I mean, there's no question that they had a very tough time getting to him. When they did blitz, they didn't get to him. The most effective blitz of the game was a Taron Johnson blitz off the corner, and then they tried it again on the very next play, and it didn't work. And, and, he, and, and really, on the one that was effective, it was just mostly effective because it hurried Rivers in to an incompletion. They still didn't get a sack on him. Um you know, so he, he, he really gets the ball out of there. And I thought, you know, they, they broke it down during the telecast. The blitz, no blitz, there wasn't a big difference. In fact, there was more yardage on blitz attempts uh, passing from Rivers. So he's just one of those guys that's going to get it out of there. You got to, you know, you got to play coverage and you got to hope you get, you know, you get some turnover luck on your side there. As far as the offense goes, the, the, only, the only sequence of the game that really upset me um, from that standpoint, was right. I, I'm trying to remember when it was. Roberts ran the ball. It was it was late in the first half. Ran yep. the ball out of the end zone when it, the ball was like in a corner of the end zone, and he ran it out of there and got got cut down real short. And then the Bills ran three times and punted. And I thought I mean, maybe that was field position. Maybe Mike, I was thinking of you all week. Do my coaches keep the same nerve they've had all year? You know, and, and, and run the same kind of game that they want to run. And I thought that was maybe a moment where they got a little tense about field position and the potential for a turnover hurting them, and they just played it safe and, and you know, ran it and kicked it. Maybe. It, it felt like it was Indy's game. I mean, it was early. It wasn't like it was, you know, the Bills were in trouble yet or anything like that. But the score there is 10-7 Colts, and they go three and out from inside their own 10 to start that drive after that penalty. And then Indianapolis just very businesslike right down the field to first and goal. And that ends with the fourth down pass to Pittman incomplete and the Bills go 96 yards. And like that that's a that's the dimension that they have that teams like this don't Indianapolis. And you know it's another way of of assessing this game it's another way of make you know assessing the difference between the two teams is you know what what you saw there at the at the end of the half um i i, I don't know just it's hard to say it's hard to know what alan saw 
what the Colts were able to do in the secondary, but what you could tell watching the game on TV, what you could tell was that these recent games where he would take the snap and just fire Diggs, Beasley, Davis, Brown, all of it just looking seamless and perfect, that was not available to him as he saw it today. Like that yep. was not that was not there. So then you see him look and start to, you know run runs up the middle, running to the right. And there was there was a lot of that uh, here in this game, but they got just enough yeah. out of their passing game ultimately to uh, win here. And you know he did end up at three twenty four <laughs> through the air. Right. Um, those those plays he makes that very few guys can can make where he's on the run. Those passes to Davis at the sidelines back to back, right? Like that that's just elite level. And you you needed all of that. You you got the t- you got a touchdown on that drive. Those plays are reviewed. Davis is just barely in in both cases, and you needed all of that here uh, to beat the Colts. I mean, really, a fabulous game. A ton to talk about from this game. The uh, second game of the day, by the way, is the Rams and the Seahawks. Scoreless middle of the first quarter. Alex Smith inactive tonight for Washington in its game against Tampa. He's expected not to play. I think that's a report. Uh, I guess Goff isn't playing either for the Rams, is he? They're going with Will Wolford's nephew, John Wolford, in that game, Rams and Seahawks. All right, we're still waiting for Sean McDermott. You want to, Joe, what do you want here? You want ID? You want a break? We'll take a break here, and we'll have the coach for you eventually. 27-24, Bills over the Colts in a thrilling wild card opener. And the Bills stay alive, headed to round two next weekend at home. Mike Schoep and the Bulldog here. This is Buffalo Bills football. 15 minutes could save you 15%.